Welcome to a VRC game review. Now I do like reviewing games, but my game reviews don't get that many views. So if you get a kick out of this, then don't forget that thumbs up button. And if sharing's still a thing, maybe you could try that too. But if you really want to help this video, then just watch it till the end. That is really the most helpful thing you can do. But obviously, if you get bored, feel free to leave. Enjoy the video. Do you expect me to talk? Of course you do, because that's what I do. Especially if you need to know about the most frustrating game you'll play all year. That's because this escape room puzzler is evil. Welcome back to the VRC, where you get to find stuff out, and I get to film stuff that doesn't make any sense. So if you like VR and tech, don't forget to subscribe and ding the bell. And don't forget, in all of my tech videos, there will be a VR giveaway. The next one is all about the best thing I ever had. This is the best thing I've ever had. So you expect me to tell you about this game and let you know why it is evil. Well, the first thing it tries to do is destroy my health by asking me to sit down, thus rendering me inactive whilst I play the game. This isn't why I got VR. I got VR to help me lose weight by having fun, he says, two stones heavier than he was when he first got VR. It's lockdown! Lockdown made me eat crisps and chocolate and takeaways and go for walks that made me think I deserved to eat all of those things. But okay, it's actually good to have more seated VR experiences, so if that's what you want, then you're sorted. But beware, you can't just go and sit on any old seat. The couch is a no-no. Uh... No, you're not allowed to be comfortable. You need to be able to pick stuff up down by your feet. You need to be able to wave your arms about like a bird man. Is this enough space? So I went and got my chair. Sorry, now you do expect me to do an actual review. We'll get there. I'm just mad that I didn't get to burn everything to ease my frustration like I could in the first game. <laughs> So the tutorials, just like any old tutorial, get the lay of the land, learn the controls, disarm the bomb without any actual instruction, and then realise the instructions were actually on a huge poster to my right, and I'm just not very observant. Wonderful! Yes! Really? Oh, it tells yes. you there. The machine. See, I'd love to think that I'm Sherlock, but I'm so not Sherlock, and this game sadly knows it. <laughs> then the game continues to laugh at me when I finally find the last bomb in the tutorial, only to realise the trigger to defuse said bomb has inexplicably disappeared. Where's the... where's the... Search the exam room, Richard. Find and dispose of every explosive. So even though I've now finished the tutorial, I now have to play Look for the Damn Trigger, and so begins the gameplay mechanic that this game insists is so exciting. It's something I end up having to do most of the time, and it's called clicking on random objects to see if they do anything. This game is meant to feel like you're in sort of real life situations, but imagine in real life if you didn't know which objects you could interact with and you had to go around poking everything. Hello, big boy. Hello. Finally, I found the trigger. It had somehow ended up in the safe on the other side of the room. How did you, how did you get in there? I don't remember doing that. Now let's just find out exactly how that happened. Yeah. That's right, I flicked it in with a photo frame. And thus returns the curse of janky VR physics. Because if this game wants to become a VR classic, then it needs to get janky with the best of them. What? What? No. Oh man. Oh, what? What? You didn't need my help anyway. Well, at least there's no scary, janky people. No, no, no. And I haven't even started with the thing that happens most in this game. That's right, the thing I haven't even said yet. The thing that they expect. I expect you to die. Lots and die I did. Over. We did. And over. Ah. Again. Each time having to start the scenario again. 
Oh, I'm not going to do it all again. Okay, so to be fair, after discovering hidden objects or things that do stuff, it is a lot quicker to get to the later parts of a level. And to be even more fair, you can often skip right to the end, like in the first level when you realise it's all about the mask thing that poisons everyone, but it's still incredibly frustrating. And the real kicker, the thing that this game wants me to do that's even worse than dying over and over, it expects me to work. In the first level, you play the part of a stagehand, but you actually have to be a stagehand. The first few minutes is spent reading instructions on how to actually prepare the stage. And if you get it wrong, the director kills you. Shut and bar the doors, lest these foul winter winds blow them wide to uninvited visitors. <sighs> Once again, I found the actual instructions of how to be a stagehand after I died. So constant poking, constant dying, janky physics, actually having to work. Like I said, this game is f***ing evil. But then something happens to make it all seem worthwhile. You actually complete a level. It's like that time I went to Glastonbury and a friend of ours broke her arm trying to jump the fence. I could barely see because of hay fever. The weather was crap. We spent too much money and someone stole my didgeridoo. And I've still never learned to play that instrument. But I look back and I think it was one of the best weeks of my life. This game is a bit like that. It makes you work so hard and puts you through so much crap that when you do finish a level, you feel like a genius. And yes, you kind of do feel like a secret agent. I actually ended up playing this game a lot longer longer than I expected to. Daddy! Daddy! The level design is actually really cool, just like the first game. The graphical style is simple but nice, just like their other game, until you fall. The one where you keep fighting until you die. Yes, they really are evil bastards. And the presentation is fantastic. The theme song is actually really good. I like the intro to the first game, but this one's definitely a step above that one. And though I do miss the expect you to die line that works really well in the song, the spy and the liar works well too, and it's sung with a lot more gusto. Gusto, old trap! And it's got Will Wheaton. He's all right. I assume they got Will Wheaton in because he read the audiobook for Ready Player One, and you know, VR people should love him. Because let's face it, we don't love him for Star Trek. I guess I just don't understand. I hope you never do. Oh, Tasha, your death was worth something in the end. The presentation of the entire game is excellent. You can tell a lot of thought and effort has gone into everything. Even with the pack they sent with some themed goodies and a puzzle box with a mysterious web address that led me to the trailer video. Now I think everyone should be able to get this. This shouldn't just be for influencers. I'm an influencer. This is actually some cool stuff, not bloody bang energy. They keep popping up, I never searched them. So should you buy I Expect You To Die too? Well, if you like puzzle games or games like Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes, then you should absolutely buy this game, especially if you really like the first one as well. If you want to have some friends around, then it would make a great VR party game if you cast it to a screen. Check out my channel to find out how. I suppose it'd be a bit like the Crystal Maze when someone was inside the room and the friends are outside trying to tell them what to do. Ask your parents. So it's time to give I Expect You To Die to The Spy and The Liar a rating and I'm going to go with a very solid 8 out of 10. That's a VR Cauldron Silver Award. If you're not keen on puzzlers, then you might not enjoy it as much. The game is available on the Quest and the Rift and all the other PC VR headsets via Steam. So that's the end of the review. Give us a thumbs up and all that stuff if you liked it. And thanks so much for getting to the end. If you got this far, in the comments, write something like, I'd like to win, I think it's, and then insert a random object so people think there's some kind of giveaway. There's no giveaway. But the next video will be a tech video, so I'd very much love to see you again on that one, and there will be a VR giveaway for you guys. Until then, make sure you've hit that free of charge subscribe button, take care of yourself, and I'll see you in the next one. See ya! Sorry about that, Will. I didn't think it'd take that long. You okay? Oh.